Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be walking you through my glute routine. This is gonna be dumbbell and like barbell dominant. I'm gonna be covering my cable routine in a different video because I do those on two different days. I like to alternate. So we're gonna call this A day. So my A day, you're gonna see a lot of RDL, Russian split squats, hip thrust with a barbell or with dumbbells, either one works. I do wanna jump right into the Q&A that I did on my Instagram. And the most asked question I think had to do with nutrition. If you're built like me, I am 105 pounds, I'm 5'3", and I have a very high metabolism. With that being said, um, I also have always kind of eaten like a rabbit. I really like vegetables and lightweight things. Things that you would typically drink or eat whenever you're trying to slim, and that was the hardest thing to change was my diet when starting out in this. So the easiest thing for me whenever I first began my like bulking journey was protein shakes. And you can accomplish a lot with protein shakes if you are consistent with them. But the biggest difference that I started noticing in my muscle growth was whenever I started eating real food. So protein shakes are great whenever you have a busy morning and you can't make a full meal. Now that I've switched from, you know, eight protein shakes a day, I mean like, I was making these big ones that were like smoothies with tons of peanut butter and all this stuff. And I was realizing that I wasn't finishing them. And then we went on vacation for about a month. And in that month, I was trying a bunch of different foods. There was a lot of meat involved. And I don't typically like to push eating a lot of meat. I am not vegan or vegetarian, but I also don't like encouraging a lot of meat intake. However, I do think that there are real foods out there that you can be eating that are high in protein that aren't these protein shakes, you know? I do want you eating real meals. I don't ever just wanna be like, oh, a shake is a meal, because it's not. It is a good filler between, I do keep protein shakes in my car, I keep protein shakes in my backpack. Those are quick and easy. The thing that I keep around the house the most is non bread. It's like this Indian bread that's really, really good and pita bread, because you can make so many different things with those. Um, I can make the recipes if you comment below and ask me to, I could definitely cook for you guys and show you what I'm doing in the kitchen. Find foods that you like, foods that are high in protein, and try to eat as many times in a day that you can. Make your meals fun, make them something that you want to eat. I don't believe in force feeding yourself. I do believe that you should just take your time with building your appetite it will get there. It took me six months to build up my appetite and only in the last two months have I really seen a difference in the way that I eat. Another thing is that whenever I'm working out, I'm hungrier. So the more consistent I stay with the gym, the more consistent I stay with my eating. Other questions that I got were how I stay motivated. And I think the biggest motivation for me is the gym fashion. That's how I've motivated myself for a majority of things in life, is that if I don't wanna do something, I get a really cute outfit and I go. Another thing that motivates me is having a gym buddy. Get yourself an accountability partner. That is like my best advice for anything that you have trouble doing. I will not go to the DMV by myself. I'm taking somebody else with me, an accountability partner. <laughs> yeah, get yourself a gym buddy, get yourself a cute ass gym outfit that you feel good in, that you feel confident in, and get yourself to the gym. Majority of the other questions were about form, so I'm not gonna talk about those now. I'm gonna walk you through my workout now and show you exactly what to do. I'm gonna tell you exactly what mistakes I was making in the beginning so that you aren't making the same ones, so let's go. Okay, so I really wanted to film this all in one day, but then I started my period and um, I'm dying. <laughs> so um, I may not actually make it through this workout. First things first is we are gonna warm up and it's just not worth it to not warm up. I've pulled my IT band before and it took weeks to heal. It was pretty painful, very annoying, and you just get no gains whenever you're not in the gym. So first thing we're gonna do are these little things and I, 
Start with like 25 of them on each leg. Next thing I do is I use a little like resistance band. I'm using extra heavy because that's the level that I'm at. You don't have to use a resistance band for this, but I like it. It's also good for building this side, like round out your booty basically, this little side muscle. You're gonna put this on right above your knees. And it's very important that you don't let your knees cave in on this, okay? You're gonna want your knees to stay pointed out like this. Have your neck in line with your back. And that's gonna be with any like lower body workouts that you do. You wanna make sure that you're not breaking the line of your back. You wanna make sure that you're keeping your neck and stuff down so that you don't cause yourself any back problems. And basically you're just gonna walk yourself down. And I try to keep my heels pointed towards each other to make sure that my knees don't come in. Next thing you're gonna do is some jump squats. I do about 25. So same thing, you don't wanna let your knees cave in and you're just gonna Making sure that you're keeping your head where it's supposed to be. A few more exercises that I like to activate my glutes are going to be with this resistance band. And you can do this in several variations of like putting it around your ankles. You can either come out like this, some of these with a slight bend in the knee. Another one that I like, which you probably saw in this video, um, I don't have that equipment here at my apartment, but what you can do is you can do this at home, you can do it on a couch, but you'll see what I'm about to do on this bench. You're gonna put it around your ankles, go right here, face down, hug the bench, and come up like this. And just make sure you're squeezing. And this is really, really good for the side muscle right here. I've also, <laughs> I've also seen people put that around their knees. I feel like I'm getting the best workout whenever I put it around my ankles, but that might be dependent on the type of resistance band that you're using. So the ones that I have, I think because the link, it works a little better for me if I put it on my ankles so that I get that good like resistance area. All right, now that we're warmed up, let's get into our workout. Okay, so you can do this with either split weight of two dumbbells or you can do it with one. I prefer to do it with one. I grab the 30. Do whatever you're comfortable with. When you start getting to these heavier weights and you're not able to do the full rep, you're not doing anything if you can't do the full rep. So stay at a comfortable weight to where you can complete the rep. But a good thing to keep in mind is that if you can do a lot, without breaking a sweat and you're not feeling like fatigue in your muscle, then you do need to up the weight bit. I'm gonna show you how I hold it on the sit leg. So, put your feet up here. I put my hand over here or out to the side for balance. And just down. And making sure you're pushing through that heel. So, you don't wanna be leaning forward, but you do wanna be pushing on your heel. And this is another reason why you wear flat shoes on leg day. Another thing about these Bulgarian split squats is a lot of people want your leg to be out to this 90 degree angle. That doesn't work for me. Whenever I'm in that full 90 degree angle, I start feeling it too much in my quads. I believe that everybody's body is different. So I think wherever you feel it in your glute, this is gonna be good for building a shelf booty. I would say just move your foot around until you start feeling it in that spot. And a big thing that I do is I try to lean back as much as possible. I'm gonna show you on this slide now. A lot of people would say that this is not correct because my knee is over my foot, but that's just what works for me. So that is kind of where I fit the most is whenever I go a little over and then I jet back. The next thing that we're gonna do is a single leg hip thrust. These will set your glutes on fire. They're not my favorite, but I do them, especially in this gym because I don't have a barbell. Normally, I'm totally into barbell hip thrust. 
that is like my bread and butter, but I don't have that in this gym. So what you're gonna do is put this on the leg that's lifting. And you come down just like you would in a hip thrust. Sit on this leg. Again, find your sweet spot that you're gonna feel it in your glute. And just pick it up. And hold at the top. I try to at least hold for two seconds before I come back down. Make sure that your chin is tucked. And then at the top, whenever I finish, I try to hold for at least 10 seconds. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do for the shelf booty is gonna be single leg RDLs. Again, I'm gonna take my 30 pound weight. So I like to use the bench, but you don't have to. And then you're just gonna kind of rock your hip into this until you feel it right around here. Again, keeping this line in your back to your neck straight. If your hand is out here, you're too far. Basically, you wanna roll this down your leg about midway through your shin. A lot of things that I see with new people coming to the gym, and even within myself, whenever I first started back, with squeezing is a lot of people do this where they go in and they're like making this really unnatural line with their body and really squeezing is just tensing the muscle not squeezing squeezing that's going to be the biggest thing that i probably learned next we're going to switch to these rdls both legs because i'll do single and then i'll do double as well um, really just depends on what weight my shoulder can handle. And I typically like doing these with barbells, but again, I don't have a barbell here. So I have two 30 pound weights. And again, you're just gonna slide. I like to lift my toes on this so that I can make sure that I'm pushing through my heels. Roll down to midway through your shin and come up. One, two. Up. One, two, up. The biggest issue that I was having with my RDLs was that I was bending too much. And in reality, the bend is at your hip. So now we're gonna do this variation of like sumo squat to RDL. And I really, really love this one. I grabbed a 45 pound weight, you can go heavier. I would say always lift heavier, but don't compromise your form for weight. So I turn my feet out, I go a little more than shoulder width apart, and I squat, one, two, come up, and then I do an RDL. Squat, one, two, up, one, two. One, two, one, two. I would typically always be finishing out like a glute day with hip thrust with um, a barbell. And what I would be doing is starting with 45 pound plates, upping it by 25 on each side, and then taking those off and switching to another 45 pound plate. So ending with two 45s on each side. And I would say with your hip thrust to just keep upping the weight you wanna do more weight, less reps, but definitely wanna at least hit between six to eight reps and holding at the end for as long as you can until failure. And that is like gonna be your biggest, best friend for a shelf booty and for like getting those gains, okay? Lastly, you need to stretch. In the beginning, you're gonna be doing dynamic stretches, so more movement, something a little more bouncy, and then you're gonna hit like your real stretching, like you're sitting down, doing your splits, whatever it is that you need to do. Just make sure that you're taking care of your muscles. And after this, you're going to eat. You're gonna eat so much high protein, high protein meals. If you do need me to make another video of what I eat after, I will say majority of my information comes from Pinterest and then I just trial and error out of that with whatever my body responds to. Pinterest is my go-to whenever I'm in a rut for looking for workouts 
or if I don't know what I want to eat that day, but I need to like switch it up in the kitchen, but definitely you're going to eat, eat, eat. Another thing you're going to do is rest. Your muscles grow while you're sleeping, so lots of water, lots of rest, take some hot showers, make sure that you're taking care of your muscles outside of the gym as much as you are inside the gym. Okay guys, I really hope that you made it through the workout <laughs> and I hope that you enjoyed this. So thank you so much for watching. I do wanna say that I am not a fitness instructor. Um, I'm not an, an as aspiring fitness instructor by any means. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please um, comment them below. I can cover those questions in the next video. I think the next video is going to be either the fitness apparel try on haul or my back routine one or the other or both i haven't decided how i'm going to structure those videos yet but if you have any questions about those please comment them below